All right, guys, John here, Feldman of Physical Therapy and Performance, coming at you today talking specifics about heel drop. And look at this production quality. I'm mean, come on, trying to do it from the rail trail where we do our running and the bugs too, so they're gonna make some cameos. Lower drop shoes versus higher drop shoes, why they matter when you should think about them when we actually think about them in the clinic with our runners. So what we mean here is actually getting into the nitty gritty technical stuff where your lower drop shoe is going to bias your body absorbing the ground shock, where the higher drop shoes are going to bias your body absorbing that ground shock. What your injury history or your running style may actually do to contribute to choosing a lower drop over a higher drop shoe or vice versa, okay? Now we've talked before about the ground reaction force. That's Newton's law. Your foot hits the ground, the ground pushes back into your foot, okay? So your body has to absorb that shock somehow. A lower drop shoe is going to predominantly bias a <clears throat> pardon me, forefoot strike, which is going to stress your foot and ankle more. A higher drop shoe is going to bias a rear foot strike and is going to stress your body at the level of the knee and above. All right, now, before you start furiously typing and say, well, what about this? What about that? Look at these exceptions. This is just a line of best fit, okay? This is not a definitive. This is not an absolute rule. We just know from correlations, a lower drop shoe is going to bias and allow for a forefoot strike. A rear foot, uh, a higher drop shoe is going to bias and allow for and promote more of a rear foot strike. Now the reason for this, with a rear foot strike, or sorry, with a higher drop shoe, there's just usually a lot of stuff there, all right? You're gonna have that pitch. This Nike Peg Turbo is a 10 millimeter drop. You have a lot of brooks that are 12 millimeter. So you're gonna have a high stack height and you're gonna have a pitch from the, uh, the back to the front. There's just more stuff to have to clear the ground when your foot's coming through in that swing phase. So this part of the shoe is just gonna come in contact with the ground first. So that's going to bias more of that rear foot strike. Now conversely, a lower drop shoe like this Kinvara 4 mil is going to have less of a stack height, less stuff there, and it's just going to allow your body to bring your foot forward more and allow for that four foot strike, okay? Uh, so yes, there are some correlations where running styles and runners may choose different shoes to <clears throat> promote their four, uh, sorry, promote their gait and uh, strike pattern, but it can also be the opposite where you have a lot of newer runners are picking shoes that will actually help dictate that for them. So what does that mean for us, okay? Well, we like to take a look at somebody's injury history because if somebody has a history of maybe uh, forefoot issues, um, you know, metatarsal pain in, the, in, their, in their toes, uh, plantar fasciopathy, ankle issues, ankle instability, things like that, we may not want them in a, uh, a lower drop shoe or a shoe that's going to promote more of a forefoot strike. Conversely, if somebody has a history of recalcitrant knee pain, hip issues, femoral neck issues, uh, things like that, low back pain, we may not want them in a shoe that's got a higher drop that's going to promote more of a rear foot strike that's going to bring that stress all the way up their body. So these are little things that we like to look at. Now again, in the realm of working with our runners, changing your foot strike and your shoe wear, it's at the very bottom of the list, okay? There's a hierarchy of things that we're going to do to actually work with our runners. First and foremost being managing your stress, managing your sleep, managing your your day-to-day -day stuff that's going to affect you, uh, you know, physically, emo emotionally, and mentally, okay? Making sure you've got good sleep and, and good recovery and good uh, stress-free environments, that's always number one, all right? Then we go down the list of uh, proper sleep, proper nutrition, uh, proper training volume, proper strength training, things like that. Shoes are all the way at the bottom of that list, okay? That's why I said this is more of a, a line of best fit. It's not a definitive. But when we do actually get down to the nitty gritty, and if we're at the point where we're talking about your shoes, well, this is actually gonna make a difference. So we're gonna be looking at your injury history, your running gait, and things of that nature. So that's just it, long and short of it. We haven't gotten really specific into heel toe drop in the past other than this is what it means, this is what it represents. But again, your uh, lower drop shoe is gonna bias more of a four foot strike. Your, rear, uh, your higher drop shoe is gonna bias more of a uh, a rear foot strike and that's definitely going to change where in your body is going to absorb that stress. So if you have any questions, throw them in the comments guys. We appreciate your listen. Uh, give us a like, give us a subscribe. You guys are huge helping us grow the channel, helping us grow the business. We get more info out there to you guys, but for now, shoes.